The tragic fallout from 9-11 continues to affect many of the rescuers who courageously responded to the attack. A new published report reveals a dramatic increase in the number of cancer cases stemming from the rescue and recovery effort. Arise News anchor Julian Phillips joins us with more on this story. Julian. Yeah, this is a very uh, disturbing uh, story and troubling report about the health scores of men and women who responded to the call of duty. Many of them were exposed to dangers that are only now coming out to light. Glenn Garamella spent months at the World Trade Center site after the attacks, helping families who lost loved ones from the New York City Police Department. It was a difficult job, but it felt meaningful that we were, we felt that we were assisting them. Meaningful and also life-threatening. At least a reported 37,000 city workers and volunteers spent days, weeks, and even months like Glenn at the site, exposed to toxic dust and debris. People didn't realize how dangerous the, the air was. Now, in startling numbers, those heroic responders, more than 2,500, are found to be suffering from cancer. The coughing got much, much worse, and um, I was really having a tough time of it. Eventually, they found out that I had throat cancer. To this day, we really don't know everything that was in that dust cloud. Dr. Michael Crane heads up the 9-11 program at Mount Sinai and warns we will see more cancer as time goes on. I expect to see more chronic disease. Certainly, we're going to see more cancer. We owe it to ourselves. We owe it to our families to get checked. Don't put your head in the sand. These things don't go away. They only get worse. Well, in fact, Debbie, sadly, the number of first responders of cancer with cancer has doubled since last year. Well, with that in mind, uh, have you been able to find out what the mortality rate so far of fir first responders from 9-11? I haven't gotten an exact number because there's so many agencies to call, and a few of them that would have the concrete numbers did not get back to me specifically. But I did talk with one uh, legal agency that has about 10,000 uh, people that they have applicants for uh, to get compensation. Out of that 10,000, 1,000 uh, uh, have cancer, and not out of 1,000, 147 have died. So it's safe to say that hundreds of people uh, have already died as a result of exposure to toxins uh, at the, the sites down there. Yeah, 11. and if you do the math just with those numbers, that's a very high incidence rate. Uh, let's talk about what's being done to determine the cause uh, of disease and the long-term effects. Okay. For the most part, you have a number of uh, World Trade Center health programs, hospitals involved, uh, Sloan Kettering, uh, Mount Sinai, that uh, have uh, people that are, are testing and doing, they're doing all sorts of tests to study exactly what contaminants were down there. There were so many, but so so far, we've got jet fuel, we've got asbestos, we've got lead, uh, we've got chromium. But there are, are possibly other things, and no one exactly knows to this date exactly how many contaminants people were exposed to down there. The problem is that at certain uh, places, uh, some people are complaining uh, that they're just being monitored. And after they're monitored, say, for instance, at Mount Sinai, they're told to go to their primary care physicians. Once they go there, in some cases, people are saying, well, we go to there to our primary care physicians. They're saying, well, we don't know how to treat this. So some people, not all, but some people are in a quandary as, a res as, as to what exactly to do. Of course, we know many years there, ago there was the establishment of the uh, Victims' Compensation Fund. Mm -hmm. How effective has it been? Well, so far they've awarded about 7,000 uh, cases to this point. But the, the, the problem there is, is that uh, this is taxpayer money, and it's a little less than $3 billion that have been allocated to this. When you think about that, the amount of people that might apply, and people still have up until I think it's 2016 to apply, October 3rd of 2016, who knows who else might come out of the woodwork? We're talking initially now, and people are focusing on in the press, about 37,000 responders, firefighters, uh, volunteers, and so on and so forth. But there was no iron dome of a defense against the cloud surrounding 9-11. Yeah. You know, I covered that story, and you could smell the smoke, the plumes of smoke as far away as Long Island. So who knows how many people are actually affected by this? this, this a lot really... of regular people just went down to help. Absolutely. So a lot of but people exposed. And even in these surrounding areas, this, this could get a lot bigger. Indeed. Julian mm -hmm. Phillips, thank you so much. It was a great report.